it. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to MCC Quad Cities, where our focus, of course, is loving God and loving each other. God is crazy in love with you, you, and you. I extend the anti-legalistic, fulfilling love of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Please rise as you are able, whether in body or spirit. Let us start our time together singing our opening song. Okay. 
that you can move to the first Sunday of the month, and we're going to have it here instead of a potluck, we're going to have a picnic. So bring your picnic stuff. We're going to have it here. Hot dogs, hamburgers, you know, all that stuff. So that's what we're going to have. The first Sunday is a picnic. All come. We'll have fun. Thank you. <laughs> music by Alan Daniels. Uh, many of you who are a long time have been in the community know who a Alan Daniels is, or you might know Angela Cavalier. Um, but Alan will be doing a couple of pieces during our worship service, and then there'll be a uh, concert on Sunday evening. Um, so plan on coming to that, and it'll just be a free will offering uh, in support of that. Thank you. Oh, oh awesome. In the, uh, this month's uh, mainstream, there's a wonderful article about Alan Daniels' kindness and class. So it's timely, Alan made the, the real mainstream, as did Pastor. <laughs> Thank you for supporting this big community. Your giving does matter as we tear down walls and build up love. Welcome our own Mona Reitman who's going to give us a gift of her drumming during the giving time. Thank you for whatever you can do. Ushers, please come forward at this time for the gathering of gifts. and presenting friends, please come forward at this time. Omar, Kylie, Alina, Annalise, and our friends who wish you to participate. Friends, family in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Who presents Alina for baptism? All of you can say we do. There we go. Oh, very good. I ask you before these presenting witnesses in this congregation, on behalf of Alina, 
Do you reject all of the things of the world that are evil and all that separates us from loving God and from loving our fellow creatures? If so, please respond, I do. I do. Do you promise to raise up Alina under the teaching, visions, and discipleship of, and redemption of Jesus of Nazareth, who proclaimed God's reign of boundless love and expanding grace? If so, please respond, I do. Do you promise to assist Omar and Kyrie in raising up Alina in the teachings of the church? If so, respond, we will. We will. Let us pray. Eternal loving God and heavenly parent of us all, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water, and after the flood, you set in the clouds a beautiful rainbow, including all the colors of your light and energy. You led your people to freedom from slavery through the waters of the sea and brought them safely to the Jordan River. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus. <laughs> Jesus wanted to go for a swim. <laughs> Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. Jesus was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. And the same Jesus now calls us to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection. Holy God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water, and she who receives it, that she may be cleansed by this water and by your Spirit to receive your gifts of life abundant and life eternal. So we pray your blessing upon this entire family, God, and thank you for them. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Refreshed and renewed in the power of your 
all-encompassing grace and of peace. May our lifestyles be characterized by love. Help us, Lord, to love, especially when it's difficult. Give us grace to pray for the ones we don't understand. Send your Holy Spirit like a breath of fresh air to clear our minds and to energize our lives. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And now with just a name or a very brief phrase, for what else shall we pray? Holy love, thank you for love. church 
and if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, be done with them. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my parent in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Please be seated. <clears throat> So a surgeon, an architect, and a lawyer are having a heated pub discussion about which of their professions is actually the oldest. And the surgeon says, well, surgery is the oldest profession. God took a rib from Adam to create Eve, and you can't go back further than that. The architect says, hold on, hold on. In fact, God was the first architect when God created the world out of chaos in seven days, and you can't go back any further than that. The lawyer smiles and says, gentlemen, gentlemen, who do you think created the chaos? <laughs> <laughs> a little law, like a little religion, goes a long way. But when you love, you have already fulfilled the law. Let us pray. O Lord, may our lifelong song be love, and may it be foremost in who we are and in all that we do. Amen. Amen. So, here's a question for you. How much debt do you have outstanding? If you're like me, the answer is way too much. Listen again to these important words from our reading that exhorts us to rethink our debts. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Now that's important because that's our main debt and we should keep that in mind. No matter how many other debts we have, that's our primary debt. The commandments, all of them, are summed up in that one command, love your neighbor as yourself. And of course we know our neighbor is everyone. Our neighbor is perhaps especially those who we disagree with, who we don't like, who aren't like us. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Now, that might not get you much when you're trying to pay your money to your creditors, <laughs> but in all other matters, love will take you everywhere you need to go. What's in your wallet? <laughs> love is what it's all about. It's the fulfillment of all the commandments. The quality of our commitment to God or our higher power is determined by our ability to love our neighbor as ourselves. The two are not separate. They are intricately interwoven. And that's what St. Paul meant when he wrote the love chapter in 1 Corinthians 13. Love encompasses all the good in the world. And we, we are called to be love. Next time somebody asks, what's your calling in life? My, my calling is to be love. <laughs> well, we'll say what? <laughs> that will get their attention. Richard Rohr, the Franciscan social activist and preacher, tells about a prayer that he heard following one of his sermons when he was preaching in Africa. An old man prayed, Lord, let us never move into stone houses. And afterwards, when he asked the old man why he had prayed the way he did, the old man said, you know Africa. 
you have seen our country. People here live in huts, and the huts have no doors. And that is why your family is my family, and my family is your family. But as soon as you move into a stone house, you build a door. And on the door, you put a lock. And behind your door, you begin to accumulate more and more things. And then you have to spend the rest of your life protecting all that you have acquired. Hmm. <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> it so describes our society. Our society that puts individualism above the community. And we are called to reverse that. We are called to put community and love above individualism. There are lessons about love for one's neighbor that we can learn from people in other countries, and there are lessons we can learn from those who have the least in our own land. Many years ago, Parade Magazine carried the story of a nun who ministered to prisoners at La Mesa Penitentiary in Tijuana, Mexico. The penitentiary had a ceremony for introducing new inmates into the prison environment. And the ceremony was called grito, the Spanish word for stream. So guards and prison officials line the entrance to the prison cells. And as the new inmate walks between these lines, the inmate must repeatedly shout their name, their crime, the length of their prison sentence, and any aliases. Before the grito, Sister Antonia would take each new inmate aside and reassure them with the words, do not be frightened or embarrassed. The Lord was a prisoner, just as you are a prisoner. You have something in common with my Jesus. Remember that when you go through the grito. Now that is love fulfilling the law. And we would do well to remember it when the world seems to be screaming at us from all sides. And we find ourselves stuck in guilt sometimes, repeating our crimes to ourselves. We would do well to remember love is gentle. Love is kind. We must love ourselves before we can love our neighbors. And so it's time for us to fine tune our relationships in love and so fulfill the law. Fine tuning relationships is like making music together. It's not about functionality when you make music, it's about beauty and harmony and peace. Relationships also protect an image and they define a community. So think of a community of faith as a sacred choir. Each member of the choir contributes a unique voice, timbre, tone, and resonance. And yet singing in a choir is not like singing a solo. Singing in a choir requires a great deal of awareness of your fellow musicians. It requires careful listening. And I am a conductor and an ear tuned to every other member of the choir. Each person tries their best to stay in tune with the group, to make their voice blend, to harmonize well, and to be sensitive to the expression of the music. Making music together is a joint communal effort that requires frequent fine tuning with each other, with the conductor, and in a faith setting with God. For every song sung by a choir is a slice of communal worship, praise, and glory focused on God and directed toward God. And I have to tell you, I get the privilege of being up here every Sunday and hearing this choir. I love to hear you sing. I think it's amazing hearing you sing. Now we might not produce a record, it might not be totally perfect, <laughs> but by God, we have fun, don't we? Amen. We praise God the sound of our voices together. The more in tune each of us are with God, the more in tune we will be with each other. So we have ways to go, don't we? <laughs> it doesn't mean that every song is going to be 
harmonious perfection. And no one is kicked out for singing the wrong note, ever. As every choir knows, you strive for perfection, but seldom, if ever, make it. It's in our striving, our communal and relational attunement, that we find our own voice and the beauty of our faith together, our voices together. The same principle applies to every relationship in your life. If you want the relationship to work, then you have to fine-tune your wants and needs and desires and goals with those of your partner, spouse, or friend. Listen, communicating, agreeing, giving, compromising, and aligning all create the kind of fine-tuning that makes for a successful relationship. Whether in your relationships at home or in your church community, fine-tuning with God allows us the ability to fine-tune our relationships with each other and with the world. That's our connection. That's the power that God gives us through God's Holy Spirit. It is the law of love. But love does not exist in a vacuum. Musicians know that even the most beautiful pieces of music are not completely and always harmonic. There are grace notes, passing tones, and dissonant chords that serve and move toward resolution. They create energy and intrigue and excitement and movement in a musical piece. Without some dissonant chords or passing tunes, the music would feel contrived and even boring. Something perhaps AI might like. Some dissonance is necessary to the beauty of harmony. Remember that when you're dealing with your brothers and sisters and you have a disagreement. The primary rule is to remember when writing or making music is not to remain on the dissonant chord, to never stop on the passing note. While they create movement in the music, they should always move toward resolution. And it's the same for the broken love that we encounter in our world. Because that's what we encounter. We encounter broken lives, broken love, a broken world. One of my favorite definitions of sin is the missed opportunity to love. I think it's a great definition for sin. Sin is the missed opportunity to love. Sometimes it's your missed opportunity, maybe it's sometimes it's somebody else. But we miss, all of us, we miss a lot of opportunities when we could be more loving, when we could have been better. But the good news is that there are always more opportunities to love. It's never the end of the story. Listening, communicating, agreeing, giving, compromising, aligning, all create the kind of fine-tuning that makes for successful relationships. In today's scripture, Jesus tries to explain to the disciples the rules of resolution, the art of fine-tuning, if you will. And Jesus calls upon the members of the faith community to try to resolve discordant relationship issues, first singly and then in tandem with others, to bring someone who is out of tune or dissonant back into a place of resolution together. I can't tell you how many times more we need to be saying the words. Have you spoken to so and so about that? And somebody brings something to you. Bob did this. Well, have you spoken to Bob about that? <laughs> Those should be the first words out of your mouth. And we're still learning, I still am, we all are. Even Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I can pick up Bob. He likes it. <laughs> the way of love is often difficult. It's a broken brother. Often, if done in love, dissonant voices hear and remember. That singing together and praising God is everyone's primary goal. And so resolution can occur naturally with all parties better to 
for having acknowledged their disagreement. Thank God for praising and praying and singing together in a harmonious community that is pleasing to God's receptive ears. Yes, even with all the bad notes, God smiled. How pleasant it is when siblings live together in harmony. And so where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them, says Jesus. Jesus never intended any of us to be about God's mission alone. Christianity is not an alone faith. Think about how many different voices were in Jesus' own small choir that Jesus spent the time that he had on earth teaching how to sing together. Very, very different voices from different backgrounds. Together we put the law of love before any of our own petty concerns. Together we learn within our great diversity to respect each other and to celebrate our own differences while working on our combined mission of loving God and loving one another. We are called to encourage those around us to join in the great choir of praise and love. But remember, we don't do it alone. We all need a supportive community, and that's what we're here for. So call on us. Call on me. Call on your friends when you need them. Even when you're not sure you need them, you need them. <laughs> Show me a musician who was not trained and nurtured and sustained by the music of the community. Show me an athlete who receives, achieves excellence apart from the athletic community. Wise people don't become so without the accumulated wisdom of centuries expressed communally <coughs> through books and colleges and universities and libraries. Business persons don't succeed on their own. They rely on dedicated experts in finance and engineering and personnel and marketing. Excellence requires participation in and the support of a community. And so in today's world, when we find ourselves so often surrounded by cacophony and dissonance and all those discordant voices that sometimes seem like they're yelling at us, what should we do? Sing. We must sing. We must sing love. If you've got a wonderful voice, literally sing. That's great. If you're like me, probably not so much. You might scare someone. But, <laughs> but you can still sing love. You can still sing love. Sing together in love. Sing in harmony our prayers to God. Fine tune our own voices to the sound of Jesus' vibe and invite others to join in the celebration. And sometimes when resolution is impossible, then let it go. And let God take care of it. God takes it from there. Jesus goes on to remind us that agreement, harmony in our relationships is paramount to being in sync with God's mission. That praising and praying together in a harmonious symphonic choir is pleasing to God's receptive ears and that God will hear and grant blessings to those who live together as siblings in harmony. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am. a music debut today.
Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and offered it to his friends, saying, Take peace. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus lifted the cup, gave thanks, blessed it, and offered it to his friends, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my love poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, remember me. Holy One, we remember you with these simple gifts of fruit of the field and fruit of the vine and the many ways in which we celebrate and understand them in our diversity or fail to understand them at all. May they be solely food for our spiritual journeys. In the name of Jesus, the joy giver, we pray. Amen. This is an open table. You need not be a member of this church or any church to receive what God offers you here today. Our ushers and helpers will come forward.
holy, awesome God, you have fed the multitudes this morning. You have fed the multitude of hopes, the multitude of dreams, the multitude of notes and songs within our souls. And we give you thanks and praise, not only for all that we have received, whether here or in the sanctity of our homes, but for all that is yet to come. And we ask your blessings in the name of Jesus, the joy of you. Amen. Amen. Please rise, whether in body or spirit, as you are able for our closing hymn. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.